This is how the United States will possibly lose the next war, especially as tensions continue to rise in the Red Sea. And it's no secret that the Iran-backed militants called the Houthis continue to attack American troops overseas, together with all the different warnings that have been targeted at the White House regarding our continued aid to Israel. Now, what's really worrying is that we are also receiving threats. We're receiving warnings from the likes of Russia, North Korea, and even China, meaning that the United States is in a very, very complicated situation where one misunderstanding or even a miscalculation can cause a domino effect of chaos, which can ultimately lead to a head-on conflict. Back as tensions soar in the Middle East, the Iranian Navy has deployed a warship to the Red Sea. This movement comes just a few days after the U.S. military sank three boats belonging to the Houthis. The Houthis are an Iranian-backed group from Yemen who've been targeting commercial vessels in the Red Sea. Let's bring in CNN's Natasha Bertrand, who is following all of this for us from the Pentagon. So, Natasha, how is the Pentagon responding to this? Well, Rahel, a defense official tells us that they are monitoring the situation closely, of course, because it comes amid all of the rising tensions in the Red Sea with the Houthis, which are an Iran-backed group. Iran does provide support and intelligence to the Houthis, according to the White House. And so the U.S. is monitoring this very closely. However, it is important to note that this is not the first time that Iran has deployed assets to the Red Sea. They operate there pretty regularly. But the U.S., of course, is eyeing this because of the fact that they say that Iran Iran has been providing the Houthis with the kind of maritime intelligence that they need to select targets uh, in the Red Sea as they com uh, hit commercial vessels there. There have been uh, over 100 attacks by these Iran-backed Houthi militants on commercial vessels in the Red Sea uh, since uh, really in the last uh, month, month and a half. And so the uptick that we have seen is really remarkable and it has really ensnared international shipping and commerce. Now, before we get any further into this topic, I just want to go ahead and analyze what is going on okay guys so the united states continues to send weapons the united states continues to send money and aid to different countries which in turn has affected how millions of us are perceived in these war times now at the same time we hear experts calling out the federal government for keeping pathways open into our country at the borders with little to no resistance so long as they seek help. With all of that combined, do you feel as if the country is now at a weakened and a compromised state? Comment one if you think that we're nowhere near where we used to be in terms of being a superpower. And comment two if you think that things are much better now compared to before. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button for the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to stay informed and updated on everything that matters to you guys. By the way, if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote, link in the description down below takes about 10 seconds. So this ship from Iran, it's a warship called Albors, and it has entered waters where a US-led coalition is already stationed, meaning that if tensions were high, or at least if they were high before, now they've been dialed up to like 11 out of 10. Iran officials confirmed that the vessel would supervise naval missions in the Indian Pacific and of course the Atlantic Oceans. Now many question that motive given that the US Navy, as you guys heard, destroyed three boats that were all carrying Houthi fighters in what was said to be an attempt to hijack a container ship. Now, what really stands out here is this is the first time that the United States has directly attacked these Houthi militants. In fact, the crew aboard these three boats were also killed during the attack, which may very well have probably influenced Iran to send out one of their warships in what can only be seen as an escalation of sorts from the United States. Now, all of this has only made matters worse for Americans and people across the globe as oil prices continue to rise because of concerns that shipping disruptions will continue in the Red Sea, even though as we were told earlier, there's a U.S.-led coalition with more than 20 different countries that are trying to protect these waters. And today we saw oil prices surge more than 3%. This is partly because of a supply disruption at a Libyan oil field. That oil field, which produces about 300,000 barrels a day, was disrupted because of protests. And then you also have, of course, concerns around security concerns at the Red Sea because of Houthi rebels that have been uh, um, hijacking or attempting at hijacking uh, vessels uh, at the Red Sea. You had yesterday's price action also showing you sort of the volatility that we've seen over the last uh, couple of sessions here. You saw when uh, Iran, which uh, backs the Houthis, uh, Iran had sent a, a warship into the Red Sea, so that sent oil prices higher. But then we went into negative territory for yesterday, and today we are seeing oil prices 
prices, which jumped back up again. So a lot of uncertainty, security concerns around the area as well that's sending prices higher. But you also have something very important that came out today, and that is a statement from OPEC. And that statement, we have it that we're going to put it up for you on the screen, basically saying that its members uh, vow for unity, that they are committed to sharing objectives of unity. So what happens next? Do we see even bigger spikes with gas? What's that going to do to the cost of living around here, huh? I bet it's not going to do any of us any good. That's for sure. However, and this is where things get a little bit muddled. Tensions between Iran and the United States is not, how do I say it? It's not new. There's always been that heat between us and it's been there for some time now. I mean, look back to like a decade ago when experts were already simulating war games between the US and Iran. And now we're in 2024, those games might actually become a reality. That's not something to look forward to given that many of these simulated war games have shown the US taking on massive damage despite overwhelming adversaries after some time. I mean, just look at our troops overseas. And yes, no fatalities have been reported, but we've seen many, many injuries reported since October of last year. Now look, I get that there's a polarizing response to what the president's doing at this moment, especially with his, I don't know, how do I say this, kind of apprehensiveness at attacking much more frequently and with more firepower, you know? The thing is that the White House is being very careful, given that this is a very important year for the incumbent president. And it makes a lot of sense for them to send out statements like this one. So this one's from the White House and it states that we're not looking for a wider conflict with these Iran backed Houthis, even saying that the best outcome can be had if they just stop these attacks. So here's the problem with this. The Houthis have said on multiple occasions that the attacks will stop if, and that's the condition that they gave, if the United States stops providing aid to Israel. And even with all of that happening, miles and miles away from the United States, we still have problems here at home, problems that lawmakers can't seem to figure out. And they're wondering why some of us are just a little bit pissed off, huh? Congress, as ever, facing a series of looming deadlines as this new year kicks off. The federal government faces two possible shutdowns in the coming months. Lawmakers have until midnight on January 19th to avoid a partial closure and a total shutdown could come in early February. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian joins us here at the table. So how does a shutdown get avoided, Nicole? I mean, we'll see if that happens, Bob. Obviously, as you know, this is a unique situation in that there are not one but two funding deadlines. So that first deadline hits January 19th, the second February 2nd. And so the short answer is we don't exactly know what's going to happen because as far as some of these appropriations discussions are going, they don't even have a top line number. So without that, you can't really pass a fuller appropriations package. So that is kind of where the dilemma lies. Now, I don't want to get too heated here, but what would happen if you left for vacation when you still had something huge at work hanging still. And I mean, it's big stuff, guys. It's gonna affect millions of people. I understand that vacations are important. We need to reset. We don't wanna run ourselves into the ground, but I mean, aren't they supposed to work together to make sure that stuff like this doesn't happen? And then at the 11th hour, lo and behold, they suddenly make things happen. But what do you know, right? I'm just a guy here on YouTube just trying to get American people informed 24 seven. There's no news breaks over here, folks. So you guys tell me, what are your thoughts on all this? And are you worried at all about where the country's going? Let me know what you guys think down below. And before I go, I just want to thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for liking the video and subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.